Today in Buffalo's thriving Canalside Waterfront District, the scene can best be described as entertaining, vibrant, and very busy as a result of revitalization plans that have recently been completed. The boundary of the Canalside District is outlined in this map, and you can see that it takes up roughly six blocks of real estate right between the Buffalo River Waterfront and Buffalo Central Business Districts. From the array of entertainment venues, popular bars and restaurants, to the water-based outdoor recreation, there's no shortage of things to occupy your time with at Canalside. And in its short 10 years of existence, the area has been known to draw in millions of visitors each year. All of this is thanks to several million dollars worth of state and private investment that was approved after years of negotiations between Mayor Byron Brown, the Office of City Planning and Private Developers. And the transition that took place at Canal Side is quite shocking since the area used to be filled with normalized criminal activity that essentially blacklisted the region in terms of receiving any form of investment. The history of this region all started with the construction of the Erie Canal in 1825 which made Buffalo, New York one of the most prolific trade destinations in America, causing Buffalo to grow at a rapid pace, and by the late 1800s there was plenty of industrial steel, grain, and chemical plants that drew in large crowds of outside visitors, mainly vendors and sailors who were looking to burn off steam in between their transport stops. Today, Canal Side hosts everything from concerts to a kids' museum, and the history of the district is just as diverse. Canal Side's basically where the most, much of the commerce happened. It was the place where American Express was born, where Wells, Wells Fargo was born. Pierce Arrow started down here. Historian and author Mike Vogel says that while the Central Wharf and the Commercial Slug built great wealth, other sections of the district built quite a reputation. This district, the Canal District in Buffalo, had kind of a worldwide reputation among sailors as among the toughest, roughest waterfronts in the world. In fact, the spot where Marine Drive is today is where the Erie Canal came into downtown. It was a neighborhood where rough and tumble workers from the canal boats would come face to face with their counterparts from the lake ships, and they would, let's say, recreate. Between the brawls, the crime, the killings, and the other extracurricular activities, the area was once called the most evil square mile in America. It was a place where there was a lot of vice, uh, a lot of iniquity. Um, it was commonly referred to in Buffalo as the infected district. There was a survey done by the Christian Homestead Association in 1893, long after the worst of those days, but still it painted quite a picture of what Canal District was like. They located in this 11 block area 75 brothels, 109 saloons, and 19 concert saloons, which were pretty much a combination of burlesque houses and vaudeville. Uh, and... As time went on, the introduction of railroad and interstate highway systems began to make canal transport obsolete, leading to the decline of Buffalo's economic prosperity. And by the 1930s, Buffalo began seeing a huge net migration from the city year after year due to a large portion of the workforce being unable to find steady jobs. After decades of inactivity around Canal Side, in the early 2000s, Buffalo city leaders called on state representatives to supply aid to Buffalo in order to combat the overwhelming number of blighted neighborhoods that began to plague the city. Aside from rehabilitating multiple neighborhoods, it was decided that the best use for the state grant would be to completely rethink Buffalo's waterfront region as a way to address ongoing environmental and economic concerns in the area. In the early 2000s, Canal Side wasn't much more than a collection of abandoned warehouses and empty lots that became dumping grounds for trash and criminal activity, making this area an excellent spot to revitalize without negatively impacting stakeholders. The people of Buffalo are extremely proud of where they're from because of the many historic events that took place within the city limits that tie Buffalo in as an important part of our nation's history. And so what better way to get people excited about the revamping of an old industrial city than to redevelop what many consider to be Buffalo's ground zero, the Erie Canal side. The Erie Canal Harbor Development Company was hired by the city planning department to handle most of the $300 million redevelopment project and their main goal was to emphasize Buffalo's past through repurposing existing structures that have characterized Buffalo's waterfront for over a century. Ground broke in 2009 with the demolition of Memorial Auditorium, which was an important local landmark for almost 70 years, and its destruction served as a statement by local officials about the importance of this revitalization project. 
Once the area was cleared, community organizers immediately began to work on exposing the new area to locals by hosting outdoor fitness sessions in the summer of 2009, and then two years later it was determined to be the spot of a concert series which provided the public with free access to open-air concerts every Thursday evening in the summer of 2011. Following the success of the outdoor activities held, the Liberty Hound restaurant was built right on the edge of the Erie Canal where the old loading docks used to sit, and its success helped to show the potential for economic prosperity and raised both awareness and support for the projects that followed. In November 2013, the long vacant Donovan State Office building was redeveloped and transformed into one canal side, which was instrumental in bringing more foot traffic to the area through its mixed-use office space, hotel, and restaurant developments that lay within. Once business investment began to pour into the area, connectivity was the next objective to complete. Redevelopment of the Ohio Street Corridor, which connects the dense downtown region of Buffalo to Canal Side and the waterfront, took place and was completed in fall of 2014, making the waterfront much more accessible. In the fall of 2014, a privately funded project called the Harbor Center was constructed to meet the demand for tourist lodging for people visiting Buffalo's Canal Side attractions. The building itself takes up two square blocks and houses 716 Bar and Grill, two NHL-sized ice rinks, fitness centers, a three-story parking garage, and a full-size Marriott Hotel, and its influence transformed the area to be more of a tourist destination than just a spot for locals to spend their free time. Just outside of the Harbor Center lies one of the most successful attractions at Canal Side. This outdoor recreation center is home to New York State's largest outdoor ice rink in the winter and hosts plenty of water-related activities in the summertime. This attraction is great for bringing in commerce as it is easy for people to spend their entire day without having to leave Canal Side since the series of bridges seen in the area can give easy access to all of the nearby businesses and attractions. In order to cater to Buffalo's modern economy, as seen throughout this video, developers made plans to repurpose many of the old buildings to transform them into restaurants and commercial powerhouses. Directly across the Inner Harbor lies Buffalo River Works, which was once a grain processing plant that has now been transformed into a sporting arena, concert hall, restaurant, and outdoor museum. Patrons can arrive at River Works either by driving their car over a connecting bridge or by paying a $1 fee to take a novelty ferry across the harbor from Canal Side. The opportunity to both rehabilitate and redevelop the existing infrastructure surrounding Canal Side and Buffalo's Inner Harbor was the perfect recipe for improving Buffalo's status on a national scale. Buffalo's lapse in economic modernization had put it behind the curve for over half a century, but this redevelopment initiative was the perfect mix of old and new and has proven itself to be the driving force in returning Buffalo to its previous state of prosperity and success.